Well, this is Scott Smith reporting in for the month of September. Give you an update on how things have gone for the last three weeks, which I've been on the road. And uh, I'm up at the cabin right now, relaxing a little bit before I take off for another two weeks. And I wanted to read you a scripture. I've been meditating a lot in Deuteronomy and Joshua. I wanted to read you a scripture before I sort of set in context what went on over the last three weeks. This is out of Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 21. Here's the scripture. You shall not be in dread of them. This is talking about the enemies in the land. For the Lord your God is in your midst, a great and an awesome God. Boy, if there's anything that summarizes what I saw over the last three weeks of campus ministry, it was that the Lord was in our midst, and he is great, and he is awesome, and he does not want us being afraid. As you know, Cy Ten Bruggenkade and Mike Stockwell and Don Carnes and a fellow named Andy Noble from London and I took a two-week East Coast tour, usually is about half Ivy League schools and half big universities, state universities, and it was a phenomenal, phenomenal trip. We had a lot of encounters with police. I can't think of any campuses where we didn't have at least an encounter with the police. And frankly, all of the encounters except for two went really well. Let me tell you about one that went really well before I tell you about one that didn't. The one that went really incredibly well was at Dartmouth. We got moved off the campus at Dartmouth. We were standing maybe inches on their campus preaching. They moved us off onto the sidewalk. Then the town of Hanover, New Hampshire, came over. They wanted to move us again and put us on a corner where, you know, uh, we'd be sort of marginalized in our outreach. But then the officer suggested I go to the town hall and get a permit. And he said, you know, maybe you can get a better location. So I went to the town hall. They immediately ushered me in. They gave me a permit, and I checked off amplification. And they approved me to set up a half-mile hailer in the middle of Hanover, Hanover, New Hampshire, where all the Brown students had to come off their campus and go buy us to go to any of the stores. So it worked out just incredible what we ended up with, thanks to the Hanover police, knowingly or unknowingly, giving the suggestion that I go get this permit. So I saw God's mighty favor. I saw his awesome activities. And we saw it in other places, too. But I did have one day that didn't go as well, and that was at UMass Dartmouth. We did preach for three hours. But then there was a plot by what I think is a lesbian-controlled uh, office that uh, actually rescinded our permit. We had verbal permission to be there. They rescinded it, and they actually called the cavalry on us, and we had about eight police show up, and uh, they were going to arrest us. And I had, as you know, one team member from London, one team member from Canada, so I decided to, to give in and let them take us off the campus. But uh, we are going to see what we can do to, uh, to fight that later so that that doesn't happen to us again. But by and large, God's actions were mighty. They were powerful. We saw a lot of kids coming up asking us questions. We stayed at UMass Amherst for eight and a half hours. If you can think about that for a second. Eight and a half hours with crowds there nonstop. The kids just asking question after question. It was just incredible. Just incredible. So thank you for your prayers. That was a tremendous tour. I can't even tell you how many individuals we witnessed to that. There's one Jewish kid in particular I remember who came up to me and I had a chance to go through some of the Old Testament prophecies with him and he said, I've never heard this, how Jesus Christ fulfilled all these Old Testament prophecies. He was just dumbfounded. Just like almost as if God was opening his eyes for the first time and he was just shaking my hand. Thank you so much for taking the time to explain this to me. And, uh, you know, I just, I just could go on and on and on about the encounters. All of the guys had encounter after encounter after encounter students some students staying for three four hours at some of the campus to have all of the questions answered about jesus christ about what he came to do in his sinless life and what he did in his glorious passion at the cross it was phenomenal and we're going back there again next april april 13th to 25th we're going back for our fifth east coast slash ivy league tour i say it's sixth Cy ten bruggen case says it's fifth but maybe it's his fifth or maybe it's my sixth doesn't matter we're going back then i came home Spent a couple nights with my wonderful wife, and then she came with me as we began a tour across North Carolina, Tennessee, and Kentucky. The goal was to eventually get to Kentucky and work with a team that uh, the Patties helped put together that are doing a phenomenal job. Jocelyn and Brandon Acuff doing a phenomenal job. They've brought together a beautiful team of, uh, of uh, street preachers and pro-life ministers who get in front of a clinic in Lexington. And then they arranged a training, and I, I think there were at least 30 adults at the training and probably another 20 kids uh, that night after the clinic. It was just, a, just an incredible encouragement to see what God is doing in Lexington as he raises up Christians to take a stand. Good Bible-preaching Christians taking a stand for life. That was awesome. We also got to be, by the way, with Donna Abair up in Portland, Maine. We went out in front of the clinic with her to encourage her team. And I think there were probably at least 40 people that showed up in front of the clinic uh, that Donna faithfully mans week in and week out 
with a tiny handful of people. So God's raising up his saints, but we certainly want to encourage the ones that are out there to keep after it because God is great and he's mighty and is in our midst. Now, before I tell you what I'm going to leave to do, let me first of all tell you that Alex Burrows, one of my, my uh, faithful supporters, had a baby, Ian. And Alan, uh, Alex, I'm dedicating this report to you. Congratulations to you. Congratulations to Laurie. Congratulations to the kids. And congratulations to Ian. Also, Patty is actually going out to California. She's going to be in on the birth of our third grandbaby that is being born to Artie and Brendan. So she flies out on the 6th of October. Uh, I guess it's, what, five days from today. And uh, I'm going to fly from Atlanta to Boise. Then I'm going to preach my way from Boise up to Portland, Oregon, and all the way down to San Francisco. Two weeks on the road with Andy Smelzer, Don Carnes, Roy Spears, and Ed Rivera, some great, mature brothers who are about my age. And we are going to preach our way all the way down to San Francisco. And at the end of that two-week tour, I will fly in to be with Patty to see that third grandbaby that she will help to bring into this world. So real excited about what's coming, but thank you for your prayers. And uh, hopefully, by God's grace, you are encouraged to continue to believe that God has sent us into the midst of our enemies, and he is great, and he is awesome in our midst, my friends. Continue to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus. He is worthy of our praise. Amen.